Greetings everyone, Joseph James here, January 27th, 2010, schooltrade.com. Here's your live trade room recap. Before we talk about the trades we took today, I want to draw your attention, you guys. If you're watching this video right now on our YouTube page, you'll notice, guys, there's going to be three links here in the description. Of course, the first one here, guys, is the recorded sessions. Every day we record our live trade room, just like we're recording right now. And we post highlights of that on our blog at the end of each week. So if you want to check those out, click on the first link. The second link here is for our 12-month track record. So you'll find out how we've done over the past 12 months. And the last one, guys, is to register for our free three-week trial. Let's take a look at the totals today. Uh, two, four, five total trades, guys. All five winners. This is the first day in a quite a long time we haven't had to deal with any real adversity. Now, we didn't see a very strong moves at all. We kind of had some weak price action this morning, so we'll talk more about that. But as you can see, guys, five total trades, 68 ticks, 680 USD, guys, and we're now over a $7,000 in January alone. Having a great month so far. Guys, if you haven't joined us yet in a live trade room, make sure to come out and join us tomorrow morning. Now, what was the most important thing that happened today? Well, we knew today we had to identify the day ahead of time. Right now, we go over this, all of this, guys, every morning at 7.45 in our technical and mental prep for the day ahead. Now, this morning, it was important that we were realistic. We needed to be aware. Today was FOMC day, and Secretary Geithner was speaking in front of Congress about the whole AIG bailout today. So we knew today was going to be like a Friday, where we have an early end to the morning session. So we knew we had to get in early, pick our spots wisely, and don't get caught up in the afternoon chop and slop in preparation for the FOMC announcement. Remember guys, FOMC day is classified by lots of volume, but in a very small amount of time in the morning. It's going to be a sluggish start an early finish, so we have that sweet spot, right? That 10 to 11 o'clock time frame, which is usually where we'll get most of our damage done, FOMC. Then remember, guys, we're not going to see any opportunity until after the 2.15 announcement. So wait until after 2.15 Eastern Time. And then most importantly, guys, don't get greedy. Right? You don't need to be trading after the FOMC announcement. If you don't feel comfortable, guys, don't force it. Guys, how many times have I seen myself personally make all kinds of money in the morning, and then because I see all this price action, right, I get a little greedy, and I try to start trading after the FOMC announcement, and boy, well, you know what? I give it all back. Get in early, leave early, take your money to the bank, and live to trade another day. First two trades on gold, last three were here on crude. Here, short-term trend here was down. How do I know short-term trend is down? Nice, strong slope to that trigger line as it falls. We, of course, have these important levels of support here, this red line. This red line, auto levels indicator, locates that red line for me. And, of course, the swing low here, right, just above 92.4. We got filled here on the breaker short once we broke below that swing low. Of course, we had to worry about, do we have enough room, right, ahead of the low of the day here. We had plenty of room. Low of day wasn't until about 90 half. We got filled here at 93.9, got our plus four. Stop moved down to entry minus one. As you can see, kind of jumped right back up here, guys, very quickly, and then stopped us out. So we got our plus four, our plus one for 10 ticks on this breaker pattern short. We then took the reversal. As you guys know, at the low of day, always looking for, at the low of day, the bounce, right? So we look for the bounce off the low of day. 1019, this happened. We, of course, have the low of day here, level of support down here. We mark up our swing high. Once we break above that swing high, there's your entry for your two-step pattern long. 92.2 was the fill. Got a little bit of a lucky bounce here. Got a plus four filled. Move our stop up to entry plus one. We got actually stopped out here as it came and crashed back down, tests out. But we got a plus three on it. That totals 14 ticks or 140 USD. So, guys, within five minutes here, 10.15 to 10.19, we made 100 ticks on the way down, 14 ticks on the way back up. Not a bad way to get the day started. Final three trades here, guys, were on crude. We have a very sideways market, right? Very well-defined sideways market. And we can tell sideways markets by double bottoms, double tops, lots of sideways trigger lines. One of the most common themes across all the markets this morning was that it seemed like all of our trigger lines were all lining up at the same levels. Whenever we see all trigger lines, slow, medium, fast, fastest time frame, guys, we know something's up, right? We're probably seeing some pretty sideways choppy markets. So, of course, we had the short-term trim is up, right? Short-term trim is up, headed towards this overhead resistance here at 7432. Okay, overhead resistance, of course, located automatically for us on our auto levels indicator. See this little swing low here at 27. Again, swing highs, swing lows, also one of our indicators that come with membership. This swing low is at 27. 
Once we break below that swing low, of course, momentum curling over and pointing down, lots of aggressive sellers, decent speed of the tape. We had our entry here, 1037. Again, a two-step pattern, a trend reversal pattern, and we're headed back to the downside. Short here, 7422 was our fill. We got our plus four filled right away. Stop us move to entry minus one. Bounce us out at entry minus one for a total of 10 ticks there. So 10 ticks, 100 bucks, guys, on our first trade in crude. So at this point, right, we had over 34 ticks. We're doing pretty good. In fact, for an FOMC day, I was pretty content at this point with our results, but we're going to keep trading, obviously. We keep watching for high percentage patterns, and we got two more here, 1047 and 1058, to finish up our day here on crude. Now, at 1047, once again, we can tell by looking at this trigger line here, right? Nice steep slope to my trigger line there. That shows me my, my trend is up, short-term trend is up. We, of course, have, again, overhead resistance, right? Already marked up for me on my chart, 7430. We bounce off the overhead resistance. We make up our swing low here. Once we break below that swing low, and this was a little bit difficult at some slow price action here. If you look at the actual candlestick patterns, you can see it was pretty choppy right here. But nonetheless, that's why we have automated trade management strategies. I don't care how choppy it is. My stop's going to be at plus four. Once I fill that plus four, I'm going to stop down to entry minus one, lock out all that risk. And then, of course, here, got another lucky bounce here. We took our plus four, and then where we normally get plus one, we get a plus two. So obviously, sometimes the ball bounces our way, sometimes it doesn't. But all we want to make sure we do here is, is don't let a winner turn into a loser. As you can see, got bounced out here, guys, for a total of 14 ticks. Two off at four, two off at two. Total is 140 bucks. So of course, now, guys, we're really starting to see this uh, trade account start to get padded here this morning. Another trend reversal here on crude. So we've seen a lot of breakers couple two steps and the final trade here final trade was another two step so in choppy environments like this guys we're always going to see the opportunity for the trend reversals now anybody can trade with the trend but can you take advantage of a choppy market that's going up and down up and down right sideways we do this all day long guys in live trade rooms so make sure you guys come out and join us short term trend was up we can tell that by looking at my trigger line right nice steep slope to that trigger line now of course we had a uh, an interesting area here Okay, you'll see here, guys, 74.50 was yesterday's, right, was yesterday's open. Now, we know whenever we trade around the open, we always want to be cautious, right? It's kind of considered to be the zero line, right? If I trade at the open, that means that there wasn't enough buy pressure and there wasn't enough sell pressure to keep it either at the extremes. So it kind of flutters back up to the open. Now, what we want to make sure we do was, is I don't want to take any trades at the open. And then if I'm trading around the open, I want to use my six tick rule. So we had to wait until we calculated, do we have enough room, right? 57 here, guys, was my swing low. So we came up, we bounced on the 74, 63 level here. We made up our swing low here at 57. Now, 57 was a swing low. 74, 50 even, right, was my, was my previous open here, right? That was the 50 level. So did I have six ticks? Yes, I did. I had six ticks there. I had seven ticks. So we had enough room to take the trade. I wanted to make sure, though, that I didn't chase after it, though, okay? Can't chase after it. If I had seven ticks of room, that means I don't have very much room at all to let this thing run against me. So I want to make sure I get the trade as close to that 57 as possible. Because if I get it any lower, I'm going to start worrying about getting chopped up in that open. And look what happened. right? Once we got down around this open here, it got all choppy and then reversed right back to the upside. So we wanted to avoid that. We had enough room to get in, but we had to wait. We had to wait because momentum at the time. Now this is where we really started to see the deterioration today. We saw big sellers, momentum pointing up. Big buyers, momentum pointing down. So we had to wait, right? I had to wait. For a short trade, I want to see a combination of big sellers, green paste of a tape, and momentum pointing down. And we had to wait for momentum. Guys, if you were with us this morning, you saw exactly what happened, right? We were calling it out live. We saw big sellers, but we had to wait for momentum to curl and point back down. Once it did, it was fall with more sellers. We took it short. 1058, guys, another two step, another counter trend trade here. Filled at 56, below 57s plus 4, plus 8, plus 6, or 220 USD, 22 ticks, guys, plus 4, second target, plus 8, trail our stop all the way down to plus 6, locks up 22 ticks, and as you can see, guys, total them all up here, guys, finishing up with the biggest trade of the day, 68 ticks, 680 USD, and guys, what a great way to spend our FMC day. Pretty easy day. We had to know what we were doing, though. Had to know what to look for. Let's prep for tomorrow. Thursday, January 27th. Now, tomorrow's a Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. So, 8.30, initial jobless claims, guys. You want to be here tomorrow for 8.30. 9 o'clock, 
Of course, we have crude oil opens up, 9.30 U.S. Open, 10.30 NAC gas. And, guys, tomorrow's Thursday, so we do another free webinar tomorrow. Don't miss that webinar tomorrow, guys, at 11.30 Eastern Time. We'll open up our live trade room at 7.45 Eastern Time, so make sure you guys are there for that. Free webinar tomorrow, 11.30. Don't forget to pick up a copy of the Beginner's Course. It has all of our information, our setups, and our entry rules. And as always, guys, we have a price increase coming February 1st, less than one week away, guys. So make sure you contact your sales team uh, to lock in your price. These are 2009 prices, guys, so make sure you lock them in. My name is Joseph James. Hope the video helps. We'll see you guys back in the live trade room tomorrow morning. Happy Fed Day. Hope we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.